does Rasmus Hoyland and Mason Mount represent a problem or a solution for Eric Ten Hag? With these two players now back training with the first team, with looking very, very possible that they will be involved in the squad come Man United's next Premier League game against Crystal Palace, does this represent a problem or a solution for Eric Ten Hag and who is going to suffer the most? Welcome to the Red Devils then. Let's get into this video. Rasmus Hoyland and Mason Mount have come back from their injuries and are in full training with the Man United squad and are looking to get into the squad come Crystal Palace this weekend. Does this represent a problem for Ten Hag or is it a solution? I'll start with Mason Mount first because he has been the topic of conversation for a long time. Many, many people have thought he had a good start to the season, even though our results weren't very good. He is number one when we play our games, when he's fit for defensive duels. Also, his energy in the press and triggering the press is very, very good. He clearly is quite good at triggering the press. And it is kind of something we miss. Now, the problem with Mason Mount being back is that we might not play with the striker. Where does Mason Mount play if he's not playing that false nine position like we did in the first three games? where Xerxes was coming on as a substitute and we were using Mason Mount. Now, I understand why Eric Ten Hag will play Mason Mount. We do want to play a high line. We want to win the ball back quickly and that requires pressing. Mason Mount is the best player we have that can trigger the press and he's also got the most energy to keep doing that for at least 70 to 80 minutes in a game. Now, unfortunately, the downside of this is that we won't play with a striker. Realistically, though, and statistically, we do not actually need a striker. Now, this is a controversial, virtual point to make, but I'll explain. Man United don't actually need a striker. Our goals are all coming from the wings. Now, believe it or not, Joshua Xerxes has only got one goal so far. And what I'm trying to allude to is yes he has other attributes his hold up play is great i've seen so many videos speaking about how good he is tactically and what he brings to man united when he plays which is absolutely amazing but considering goals i know eric ten hog and his team will be looking at the fact that our goals are coming from players like marcus rashford garnacho and amadiallo uh, even from defenders like the let so if we're looking at this realistically, what we have to realize is that Joshua Xerxes not being in the team or Hoyland not being in the team, I know I'm pushing some buttons here, wouldn't actually be such a huge miss considering what Mason Mount brings to the team. Now, obviously, the flip side of this, because there's always a flip side to it, Mason Mount does not add goals. And how many goals have actually come from our press or how many goals have actually come from him turning over the ball? At the moment, only three that he's been directly involved in when we have the press triggered and when we win the ball back. So this is a very, very interesting side to look at it from. But I know because Mason Mount was a high profile signing from Eric Ten Hag, he's another player that has to be playing and played into form. So for the likes of Xerxes and Hoyland, who I'm going to speak about in a bit, this could be very, very bad for them. Um, but it could be good for the team considering the tactical approach Ten Hag wants to play, which is a high line and pressing football. Now we come to Rasmus Hoyland. Is Rasmus Hoyland a problem or is he a solution to a problem that we currently have? I think at the moment, the striker position for Man United for the past few years has not really worked out. We are not a team that feeds our strikers. Hence why we went and got Joshua Xerxes because he's somewhat of a Harry Kane type, type striker where he can drop into midfield. Most of his positions in our game against Barnsley, uh, against Barnsley were in the middle of the park, even against Southampton, were in the middle of the park, uh, pretty much almost in that number 10 role. So if you look at Rasmus Hoyland, he's not really that type of player. He can run with the ball and he can receive the ball, but he is someone who is a penalty box striker. He is a striker that is waiting in the box to be fed and that's waiting for service. Now, Man United are not the service type of team. As I said earlier, our goals are coming from the wings. That does not mean that our wingers are assisting. 
They're not assisting. They're assisting each other. Our wingers are assisting each other. They're not assisting our strikers. So do we really need a striker to play in the system that we have? And I'll always reference what Man City did. I hate to reference this, but it could be interesting. What Man City did when Haaland came into the team, Man City put crosses. There was, they were on less than 40% crosses in a game before Erling Haaland came into the, into the team. Man City are almost touching 70% crosses now that Erling Haaland is playing in their team. Now, what they've done is they've realized what kind of striker Erling Haaland is, and they've gone and gotten wingers that can play to his strengths. Jeremy Doku is one of those examples. Now, we don't have strikers that are extremely, we don't have wingers that are extremely creative, except for Ahmad. I think Ahmad is our most his first, his first decision is always to look for the pass, whereas Garnacho, Anthony, and Rashford, we all know their first thought and their first decision is to shoot. It's not a bad thing when the goals are going in, which we've seen the goals went in against Barnsley. Bringing me back to my point with Hoyland, is a striker such a miss? I actually do not think it is. I know this is extremely weird, and I'm going to be pushing a lot of buttons, but I don't actually think in the system that we are going to be playing under Ten Hag and that we've seen in recent years, the striker for Man United is a graveyard shift. We don't really have players that can feed a striker other than Bruno and Ama Diallo. So I think Rasmus Hoyland, like I said tomorrow, I don't think I'll see him start. Um, I think we'll prioritize other positions to really get our structure correct, uh, to really get our tactical um to get our tactical poise and to see what Ten Hag is really wanting to do. I don't think that a striker is involved. It's great to have Hoyland and Xerxes um, available when we, when we need them. But realistically, I don't really see how a striker fits into what we're trying to do. And I would actually value what Mason Mount brings more than Hoyland because Hoyland will score you goals, but he needs to be supplied. We don't really have the personnel or the players that can put in five to ten crosses in a game we don't have that we have players and we know Marcus Rashford back on form does not mean assists it means goals he's going to be shooting from outside the box he's in the top 10 for most goals from outside of the box in recent years in the Premier League so I think the the Hoyland thing even the Xerxes thing the striker thing in general is something that we have to move on from as fans in and I'm going to stop complaining about it and I'm just going to accept the fact that the style and the system that we are implementing just does not really fit a striker at the moment. And I don't think that's a bad thing because other players are starting to shine. And in the last 30 minutes, we bring a striker on our focus changes. We're whipping crosses in. Then obviously it works. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know that was like a lot to take in. I know a lot of people have an opinion on this because a ton of people love Hoyland. I really like Hoyland too. I think he's a great striker with a high, high ceiling, but we have to be extremely honest with exactly what we need. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next video.